Welcome back to Alberta Live. I'm your host Walter Schwabe here on Fuse Logic TV with with here with Doug Griffiths. Doug, uh, we're going to talk a little bit of finances before we let you go on with your day. I know you got a big debate tonight, one of many you've had. Uh, but before we get to the debate stuff, let's talk a little bit about uh, finances. So, the Alberta Taxpayers of Federation, Scott Hennig, you know Scott probably pretty well. Uh, didn't score you so high on your fiscal policy in some areas. That's excellent. And and one of the things was centered around discussion about a sales tax. Now. You and I have even had a discussion about a sales tax, whether the the possibility of a sales tax here in Alberta. And you know, I my belief is is that we need to get our spending out of control first before we start taxing Albertans more. Um, now, and I know you've always said your response is, and I'm going to take it away from you because you say, "Well, I want to have a discussion, right? Okay, but let's get right down to it." For those people who are who are somewhat you know skeptical or pessimistic or whatever, they're going to go right back. And you mention the word sales tax, and immediately you're just saddled with it. Clarify for us, what is your fiscal policy around, uh, the, I know you said the revenue is out of whack. Are we going to have a sales tax under your administration? That's not my decision to make. <clears throat> Look, I've said this over and over. I have some ideas on what we should do. But the second I lay out what the plan is, there will be a team of people that will be opposed on both sides. And, and so if you do a little bit of cuts... There will be people who will holler, why would we have to have cuts in the provinces, Rich? And then if you stay with the same plan, there will be people, and probably the same people, who will say, why are we running deficits in the provinces, Rich? Because the fact of the matter is that the majority of people in this province aren't aware we collect $12 billion in taxes, corporate and personal. We spend $37 billion. The rest, that gap of twenty or $39 billion, the gap of $27 billion is made up with sin taxes like smoking, alcohol, and gambling. It's made up of almost $6 billion in federal transfers and a reliance on oil and gas revenue. And everywhere for 10 years, people say, well, don't rely on oil and gas revenue so much. Well, then we better have a, a discussion about our situation. And look, even, even Jack Mintz uh, from the UFC Business School said that if we don't discuss our tax situation, and it doesn't mean more taxes, it just means the way we, we designed our tax system, we're at risk of losing our competitive advantage on taxes. Peter Lawhe came out and said, you know what? Albertans don't pay for what they get. There's a big gap of $27 billion. Albertans better have a discussion about whether or not they're going to continue relying on oil and gas or do something different, pay for it themselves or cut, or a combination of both. There's and, an argument. And all I have said was that I cannot present the solution to Albertans until they understand there's a problem. And there are a lot of people that have don't know that information because, frankly... For 20 years, they've been spoon-fed that everything is just wine, fine, right. and yeah. it's not fine. Okay, so you, you talked a little bit about, you, you mentioned open government, and you know that that's a major passion of mine. Um, it's, it's something that I absolutely believe wholeheartedly should happen in this province. Mm -hmm. And then I've done a lot of research. I've been immersed in the culture for years now and uh, have researched it quite a bit. Um, one of the key things to, to uh, an open government truly would be participatory budgeting which has been happening in Brazil for decades now, okay? And everybody in uh, within the public servant side of things and Treasury and other, are you kidding? We're going to take the decision-making power away from the people on the inside, and I trust them. They're smart people. That's not what this is about. If they understood what participatory, uh, participatory budgeting was, they'd know that what we're, what we're doing is, is we're setting up a framework, and we're asking Albertans in this case, where do you want to spend your money? How do you want to spend your money? We're doing it simply. And then once we get that feedback online for everybody to contribute to and, and participate in, then we're bringing it back to the guys who pull a budget together all the time. We're saying, okay, well, so this is what we're working with. Um, or would you be in favor of something like that within your administration? Absolutely. I mean, the, I, I, all of these challenges, whether it's the fiscal situation or the challenges in healthcare, are not just my challenges or the government's challenges. They're Albertans' challenges. And I don't know where we would ever... I mean, I guess it worked before, but we've got... 23,000 full-time government employees. The presumption that all the answers lie in those 23,000 minds is wrong. We have 3.7 million Albertans that we can, we, can, we can give them the data and come up with a lot more creative ideas than we'll necessarily come up with ourselves. And even if um, we don't come to a consensus, Albertans got to own the issue and come up with some, some ideas themselves. And I, I don't see how that's a mistake. So, you know, the, the interesting thing about that is that when you do that kind of thing, and you, I mean, there's all sorts of levels of, of registration, and you can, you can uh, control precisely who's working on it, so you know who's doing it. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the, you immediately 
offer this up to the world, in fact, actually, potentially, right, for feedback in terms of what's working in other jurisdictions mm -hmm. around the world. So it's not even just, just Albertans, yeah. not that we're not smart here, but we have access to the world now, the best financial minds in the world maybe that might be able to help us out too. So Just think about healthcare. I mean, every time you discuss healthcare and the changes, people get scared that we'll go to an American-style system. But they're, the Japanese, the Germans, Norway, uh, there are countless systems that work. And if we opened up some of the challenges we have in healthcare, just imagine the expertise we could draw in but with somebody that says, I, I've got the solution. We've right. already implemented that somewhere. And here's the data. Yeah, 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 exactly, to back it up. It's it's incredible, the opportunities that we could have. A um, couple, of, couple of things. We've got a question from the chat room. We'll go back to the chat room. Evan, what's our next question from the chat room? This is from Dollhouse YYC, Mark Dahl. He asks, it's a little wordy. With 40 years of power under the belt of the PC party, the lines between government and party have become blurred. It is clearly easier to continue the closed culture of executive council directing bureaucrats who are afraid to rock the boat and bring forward their best ideas. How does one person change this? Talking about rocking the boat and whether you can or you can't. Oh, I've been rocking the boat for <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> That's never question. stopped me yet. It is a great question. And I, I always have somebody that says, well, how are you going to make a difference? And I, I remind them that uh, large avalanches start with one snowflake moving. So it just takes somebody with the will, and maybe it won't turn into something, but I sure got to try. And I mean, we've heard feedback from all over the province that uh, people who honestly believe if if we don't change the culture, if somebody like me doesn't win the leadership and and open it up and get rid of this this culture that we've developed. Well, there's a the hashtag the old day. boys club that's going yeah. around Twitter. Right? Well, I'm not an old boys guy. I know. And so if it doesn't change, then then Albertans will embrace the first leader that comes along that from outside the party that has a new perspective, and that'll be the end of the party. I, I tell people all of the time who think that that the PC party winning the next election is about uniting the PC party. There's no way that's what it's about. People did not join the PC party and vote for Peter Lougheed 40 years ago because they suddenly found the PC party had all the solutions. In fact, if you put the PC party and social credit party policies together, they were pretty hard to differentiate. What they... What they backed was somebody who could pull Albertans together with a common vision of what the next 20 years was going to be like. That's what Peter Law he brought to the table. He didn't unite the PC party. He united Albertans. And either, either our party picks someone that can unite Albertans and pull them together, or Albertans will go find somebody who can. Right, it might not necessarily be our party. Well, and there's more competition out there today than there was just a little while ago. Isn't that so uh, like it that. is. It just makes, <laughs> it, makes it interesting, doesn't it? I love it. Um, okay, so tonight we've got uh, what is it? The final debate tonight here in Edmonton. The last it's the one. eight of eight, right? Uh, you guys have uh, you guys have been across the province now. What different are you going to bring tonight? What what what's the uh, what's the strategy tonight going in? And and of course you don't want all your all your compadres there to know exactly what they're what they're in for from the the Griffiths camp. But Actually, you got something I can up your tell them for yeah. any of them that are listening right now. All five of you, I'm going to do the same thing I did every other time. I've got a different four minute intro and a different two minute close because I try and shake it up. It's got the general same message in it. Uh, but I'm going to do the same thing I did to you every other time. I'm going to speak from my heart, and I'm going to be honest and uh, deal with it. All right. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching Alberta Live here on FuseLogic TV. Thank you so much for your questions and your participation. What makes this social TV is you participating. And as you know, as you may have noticed uh, recently, we have done things like opened up our stream to embed codes to allow you to embed this in your website or your blog. The reason why you'd want to do that, of course, is not only to drive traffic to your website or your blog, but it gives you a unique content element to your website. And we're going to continue to pull together great shows if you've got ideas for shows, if you want your candidate on this show, then go and tell them to come on the show. We are, we've invited all the candidates to this, to this date. We've only had two come out and actually, I don't know if it's brave enough to come into the hot seat, Doug. I love it but, here. <laughs> but you know what? We've, uh, we've uh, had two of them, and both Doug's actually, ironically. But uh, we're open to having all of them on. And uh, we're also going to see if we can't line up uh, the new leader of the Alberta Liberal Party, uh, Raj Sherman, bring him back on the show and uh, see what he's got to say now that he's leader. He's been doing the, the, you know, the, the media routine here lately, obviously. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for tuning in. And Doug, before we sign off, 
Where can people find out more about you, your campaign, and, and what's going on there and what you believe in? Well, they can come to the debate tonight, uh, but the best place to go is uh, betteralberta.ca, our website. It's got all the videos on the, the value statements we have, the policies we have. Pretty much you put everything. out a new one today, though. That yeah, it was, a, it was a good summary that sort of explains why I'm running and, and uh, just encapsulates me. It, they showed it to me when we had a room full of 50 people, and I got a little teary-eyed because it's... <laughs> It's still. It was such a good video, and it sums up why we're doing this so well. It was great. Well, look, we're not looking to we're not looking to uh, to elect as Albertans to elect if you're PC to elect a, a new leader of this party, and we're not looking to just simply elect another premier uh, for this province. We're we're looking to a human being to lead other human beings, and that's uh, that's incredibly important. I will I'll commit now. Um, when I win this, you should have the leader of every one of the parties on here, so we can have a discussion. Hey, yeah, I'm up for it. First one. Listen, we've had Danielle, we've had Glenn Taylor. Let's right? have us all together. We, let's have everybody on the same show. We'll yeah. work it out. Excellent. That sounds that sounds fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Tune into the uh, debate tonight. Uh, watch uh, Doug and, and all the other uh, candidates vie for your vote. Thank you for tuning into Alberta Live. I'm Walter Schwabe. Take care.